Okay, so we'll call this meeting to order. We don't have, according to our procedures bylaw, the mayor is chair, the deputy mayor is chair, so council must appoint or vote on the chair. We just made quorum. But, uh, we have anyone, quorum? Yeah. Quorum's yeah. enough? Yeah. Okay. So does anyone want to put their name forward? Councilor Bob. And second. Second. Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? Yeah. Councilor Bob, the floor is yours. I believe to the big chair. Yes, that gavels of it. <laughs> okay, I call this meeting of March fifth to order at seven oh four. Welcome everybody. So I'm hoping that council gives me a hand with this uh, new career of mine. We'll move forward. So with that, we'll uh, call for adoption of the agenda. I'll have that in front of you. Moved by Council White, second by Council Boychuk. All in favor? Discussion on that? None? Carried. Confirmation of minutes. We need a motion for that, Derek? They're all in the boxes. You just have to open them up. Uh, yeah, there is a resolution. Okay. Under number three. Okay. Resolution in the boxes. Just click it. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry. Resolve the minutes of the February 20th. 2024 regular council meeting and the February 27th, 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Ban. Committee meeting be approved. Moved by Council Medwood, seconded by Council White. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We have no delegations or hearings tonight. Communications, do we have any of that? I don't think mm -hmm. so. Reports move to 7.1. Director of Public Works, Mr. Harvey. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I just uh, posted a little mini report on the general chemistries. So that's something that we have to do every three years. We lasted it in 2021, so it was due in 2024 and then we post that to the website for public information. And uh, <clears throat> so when you scroll down, you'll see there's columns, there's raw water, treated water, and then distribution. And so raw water is coming out of the wells to the plant. Treated water is once it's gone through the plant. And then the distribution is at uh, the shop. And here we just pick two spots. <coughs> and, uh, these are according to the Canadian Drinking Water Guidelines. And there's two different types of limits. There's a maximum acceptable concentration and aesthetic objective. So the maximum acceptable concentration is something that if you go over it, you could have health effects. And the aesthetic objective is something that it's nice to be below that, but it's not a risk to the anyone's health. And so <clears throat> there's a few things for the raw water that are over, like iron and uh, manganese and turbidity. Uh, but then when it goes through our plant, we have, we add that potassium permanganate and we oxidize the water with the aeration and potassium permanganate as an oxidizer. Uh, so it causes the iron and the manganese to come out of solution and then it settles in the detention chamber and then whatever doesn't settle in the detention chamber makes it to the filters and then it gets caught in the filters. So then you can see uh, for iron it was 
818 micrograms per liter for raw, which was over, and that was undetectable once it was <coughs> and Same with manganese, it was 256, and then after it was treated, it was 6.13, so that's below uh, those concentrations. So that's why the plant was set up that way, and it's still functioning the way that it's intended to. So we post that to the website so that the public can see it. Have any questions we can reach them. Any questions from Director Harvey? Councilor White. You mentioned aeration. How do you aerate it? Uh, there's a big fan in there, and then there's a line that has a bunch of little bubblers, just little nozzles. And so when it goes through the detention chamber, the first three uh, elbows in the detention chamber is where that line is, and so the air bubbles just go up through the water. And so <coughs> combined with the potassium permanganate, oxidizes the iron and manganese. Have you done any experimentation with the size <coughs> of the air bubbles? Because the air bubbles themselves, because obviously you could have big bubbles, and you get very fine ones, which there's some work being done in uh, research for fish, and fish plots where we have aeration. And I think, that's a key word, that those finer, finer bubbles did a better job of putting more oxygen into the water. I don't know that, but it should be available. So. That might be something for you to look at another day. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely look at. And this system was uh, engineered, uh, so it was designed, but we can definitely check what the modern literature is. Thank you. I just have a question. Uh, so, has there, in comparison to years before this, has there been any significant changes in that? In those uh, no, the 2021 is similar, uh, where the iron and the uh, are high, like over the limit for the raw water, and then once it goes through the treatment system, then they drop down. And that's just the chemistry of our groundwater that those two are uh, high. And we have the capability of finding out where the well levels are. Like, do we know where the levels are at all times? Or yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councilor Medwood. Yeah, just a clarification question, but as a chair, are you allowed to ask questions or do you have to pass the chair to somebody else to be able to engage in discussion? All right. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else to report? Yes? No. Uh, sorry, no, that was the main for us for this. Just to mention the uh, five, if I could. Go ahead. Uh, just to speak on the snow removal, since the snow snow Yeah, <coughs> so we had, uh, the grader has been going 24 hours a day since Sunday at 2 a.m. Uh, so we have two shifts, uh, so two operators, and like that. And then the, uh, the loader backhoe, or sorry, the skip loader has been out at the same time doing the back alleys in the night, one for working alone. Uh, so that we have two guys out, but then also he's able to keep ahead of the garbage truck so then it's all open for the garbage truck the next day. And then during the day, uh, the loader and all our, the track list and all our other equipment is out uh, taking care of things. So we thank the public for their patience. It was a big storm, but uh, we're getting uh, it done. Can we? Uh, I've noticed some comments on social media about wondering where the uh, loader zone streets are getting done. So is there a way, I know it's not a set schedule or time or anything, but is there a way we can maybe somehow show that map as well? Because I think we do have one for loader zones or maybe we can list the streets. And if we can maybe try to communicate, because I do agree if they don't know when the loader's potentially going to be there, then how do they get their cars off the street to make it convenient for the workers? So is there a way to communicate that? Yeah, the foreman actually mentioned that to me. Uh, so we had a quick discussion and we're gonna have it divided by Main Street. So similar to how it says greater zone one and two, and then it'll say loader working south of Main Street or loader working north of Main Street, because there isn't as many, so, or as many streets with the loader. So we'll divide it into those two, and then they can check same with the greater. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? 
If not, resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Council Medway, second by. What's your name? Chuck. <laughs> All in favor? Carried. Okay. Council on CAA report, CAO reports. Council Medwood, you want to go first? Sure. Okay. Um, I have had multiple meetings for the community safety well-being uh, in the last uh, couple weeks. We are, I believe, meeting tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, to narrow down who is going to be reaching out by phone calls to get our um, advisory. steering committee and advisory committee, or do, are we calling it advisory for the whole nine yards? Advisory committee. Okay, I just had to clarify my lingo because it's been changing a little lately. So we have our core group and we are looking to get a letter sent out to the advisory committee and then each member of the core group is going to kind of make a few phone calls to make that personal connection. So I believe we're planning in April to have our first full advisory. I think Matt told me April 18th. Okay, so that's going to be coming up in April which is very exciting because we continue to move with that. I have had multiple meetings for services to seniors as well as TONS and I am learning lots of information with regards to our seniors and our transit system and met with CAO Pool so I am going to take the initiative of looking into seeing if we can engage people in the community to help diversify our handy transit van so we have a better representation for the people who actually qualify to use it. But the other thing I just learned today is, I'm not, I, I'm not clear, I don't have it down here in my notes and I'm trying to think off the top of my head and I don't have it. But whoever gives us the grant money for the handy van, they don't own the program. They don't own the service. Which means <coughs> as long as we give priority service to our mobility challenged members of the community, we are meeting the objective of obtaining and receiving that grant, but we are also responsible to make that operation feasible, which means as long as we give priority service to our mobility challenge, it's there's nothing stopping us from also opening that service up to other members of the public. So last week, Councillor White, you had asked about our immigrant population who don't all have vehicles. There is potential and possibility for them to diversify even the use of the handy van and potentially generate more revenue to make it a more, um, well, meet the needs of the community as well as uh, uh, meet our mobility challenge needs. So I'm very excited about that and looking forward to continuing to work on that. And I believe that is it other than I know there was a cow meeting with some budget discussions that happened, and yeah. Thank you. Councilor White. Hey, interesting, I, I'm paralleling uh, Councilor Medwood's comments there. I, I met uh, by uh, technology with the, one of the immigrant services coordinators out of southern Manitoba, and it came up with loud and clear the transportation as Councilor Medwood talked about is a, is a priority for them, as is housing, which we're all aware of. Infrastructure, as she also mentioned, would be wonderful. We could include the immigrant community for all sorts of reasons. Some of them probably don't have cars to can't afford them yet, so uh, there's a lot of parallels in these many committees. Uh, that's about it for, for the meetings, the cow meeting, and <coughs> the budget was talked about at length also. So thank you. Thank you. I'll answer your um, Yeah, we had the cow meeting and a firework meeting, and tomorrow we'll have a meeting with uh, Director of Recreation and the Ag Society, I believe, at 1.30. Um, other than that, I've been doing a lot of research and looking into uh, shared services and some ideas uh, going forward with that negotiation, hopefully coming up soon. Other than that, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, that's what I got to say. I just, I'd like to uh, go again back to the graders doing so. I'd like to thank the guys at the two 12-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. That's two guys that's putting in some long, hard days and kudos to them. 
because you have to understand that these people are doing this. They do get paid, but they're doing this. They have the right to refuse. They don't have to work all night. And they have families too, so they're taking pride in their work, and I, I hats off to them. So they're doing an excellent mm -hmm. job. So I have an upcoming airport commission that's to be decided yet. And, uh, I'll let you know as soon as possible. Uh, just to speak a little bit about uh, Green Arrow again, I guess we'll touch base. I'll get you from his phone number, and maybe you should carry on the conversation. Be more in your plate to mine, so then I can carry on that. So just I'll let this time I'll let CAO. Uh, who will explain a little bit about the DBH machine? Yeah, <clears throat> just looking quickly into the the uh, emergency center for this building, the, the DBH fits this panel actually perfectly. So what it outputs, the output on the DBH matches our panel perfectly. We don't, we don't need any major changes or transformers or anything like that. So it's going to significantly decrease the amount of that uh, capital project. But we are talking to local electricians uh, to get us some prices, and the way we go is some really good news on the DBH. I thank Councillor Bobbitt for his suggestion. Sometimes that that's all it needs. Good idea. Councillor <coughs> White. For the sake of technologically illiterate myself, and our listening public, could you tell us what a DPH is, please? Uh, it's a it's a generator basically. It's used. It's used by Public Works to, to thaw copper lines, so it, it creates a current uh, through, the, through the system which will thaw the lines if they freeze, but it can also be used as a energy output, uh, a generator basically, diesel generator. So if the power is down in the community, we could use that to run this, this office? That's right. And more probably. Uh, well, it's, it's just the sock. It's we have we have the building separated, so it's just the east side of the building. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, okay no, thank you. And that's what I have. I'm more for a uh, member to privilege shop. That's it for me. Can we pause for just one moment? I believe Terry cannot is having difficulties hearing, which means our public will likely have to sorry, you're on distracting here. We can maybe take okay. a moment to take a CAO report. I have a written report for council just for updates. Uh, I, I, the quotes came back for our strap plan reprint, so $2,500. I wanted to give council one line. I know the, the decision was to, to go on a reprint, but uh, one last chance to send it out as is with a marginally acceptable spelling mistake. Discussion, Council Member. Personally, I think it would be more feasible to potentially go ahead with Councillor Boychuk's suggestion of just offering a hundred dollars to the public for the person who can find the first person to connect through email or phone call to identify that they have found the typo and just offer them. Uh, that's a heck of a lot cheaper than twenty-five hundred dollars for a reprint. All town employees in certain times or place aren't eligible for <laughs> <laughs> Or counselors, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or their, or their fa immediate family household slash. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been um, Councilor Bob. Oh, it, it might have been. Sorry, my apologies. I like it. We can do it. Uh, and then just to update council the structure standards bylaw, the bylaw enforcement bylaw, and the amendment bylaw. bylaw uh, have are done their legal review, so we'll just go through those changes uh, on March 12th. So I'll just provide a summary of all of the changes that, that went through legal, and uh, and then we'll decide on when council wants to see those for for readings. Yeah. Just to follow up on the first one, do we need a resolution for that hundred dollars, or I don't think so. I I have the go to spend twenty five hundred to read prints. Okay, fair enough. And then uh, also the accommodation tax went through legal, so we're, we're going to just review that on the 12th. That's the same night that we're meeting with the STRs, uh, the short-term rental <coughs> owners, so there's no reading that night scheduled, it's just a review, but uh, we can go through, through process going forward on the accommodation tax as well, including further consults, public hearings, etc. Uh, and that is pretty much it. 
Any questions to CAO approval? I just have the one where I have to pass the chair. Oh, go ahead, Council Member. Um, you mentioned in your report about the district meeting and only resolutions approved by Council will be, how, how does it worded here? If Councillors have resolutions, please bring forward prior to the June district meeting, only resolutions approved by Town of Swan River Council will make the AMM meeting. Can right. you kind of explain that? I'm not sure I'm clear on what that means. So the, the district meetings are the AMM's consultation with local uh, municipalities for the fall resolutions. So uh, they don't accept, I guess, unapproved resolutions. We can't, I can't make one up and just say, oh, the town of Swanner wants this and the AMM support it. It must be a past resolution from council for the AMM to support that resolution. Okay, so it's just referring to us as an individual body, but anybody else in the Parkland region can bring forward a resolution from their council to be discussed at that district yep. meeting? Yep. Okay, yep. that's all I wanted to clarify because I got it kind of read to me as though well, well, the town must only yeah, the no. town can approve what's going to be discussed at that meeting I'm like well that doesn't seem very open but okay you've cleared it up thank you okay so can I ask a question if I I'll pass? take over the chair okay go ahead Councilor Bob. Uh, um, recycling tender thoughts timeline I'm working on that so hopefully Thursday I'll have that update and send it out to you for transportation okay. to review Perfect, thank you. Okay. Okay, there's no resolution to that. Okay, Swan Valley, 8.1, Swan Valley Planning District Budget. Discussion. Council member. I believe we do a moving and a second in yeah, the discussion. Did. Yeah. Resolve this one like Swan Valley Climbing District 2024 budget be accepted. Moved by. Councilor Boydrick. Second by Councilor Midwood. Discussion. If none. Yes, I just need to bring that document up, but I've got to close this window first. Um, I just wanted, I think that's this one. Okay, what does DO stand for? It's DO wages, DO <coughs> mileage, DO equipment. There's a few items with DO in front of it. What does the DO stand for? District office, I believe. I believe it's development officer. Thank you. And what is hosted min fee? I believe that's the the tender that the district puts out for the administration of the organization. Who does the administration of the organization? Is it the CD right now? Southern Conservation, Conservation District. Okay. I think those were the only things I was looking for clarification on. Thank you. Okay, all approved. Gary. Gary. policy uh, 8.2 oh sorry <coughs> resolve that the Swan Valley Planning District 2024 levy of seven thousand three hundred eighty eight dollars and twenty six cents be approved for payment once the 2023 audit financial statements have been received move by Council Boychuk second by Council White discussion um, oh, no, I don't. Sorry. That's okay. on the next one. All in favor? Carried. Now, 8.3. Off. 
adopt off-board policy. Is there a resolution to that yeah. fact? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Eight adopt off-board policy for the Three, eight, three. Resolve the Town of off-boarding policy be received and approved as per attached Schedule A. Council Boychuk, moved and seconded by Council White. Discussion? If not, all in favor? Oh, sorry. I do have one question. Well, we'll let it discuss, but I think it's been called. But. Um, there's two reference points to hold exit interview where necessary. Personally, I feel it is good business to conduct an exit interview with every employee. The, the reason I have where necessary is, is we have a lot of casual workers, workers that are sometimes are in university, sometimes they're they're not, they're, they're here, they're not, they're, they're really fast and they, you know, it's, sometimes they're, they're not here for very long periods of time uh, and we don't feel a exit interview for, because we will have to do it for everyone if council passes this policy and that may be a considerable. I understand that, but at the same time, if we rely heavily on casual in, uh, employment, especially with the operation of our rec facilities, which I'm assuming might be the greater number of them, wouldn't it also be good to know why they may or may not come back? So of if course. they are a student and it's because I'm going away to school or are you leaving because, well, there's not enough hours for me, I need another job. So that might be, if we're struggling for filling vacancies, it might be something then to know that information as to why we're losing casuals so that we can then maybe look at how we're that, managing staffing. That's understood, but we're not proposing that we don't do them for casuals. She can still do them for casuals. We just won't do them for every casual. If you force us to do it for every employee, we, we have to, and we don't believe that's valid. Okay, let's move forward. Your motion's been passed, so I guess the discussion management can carry on. Eight point four. Resolve that the CAO Director of Public Work Vacation Restriction Policy be received and approved as per Schedule A. That's approved by Council Boychuk, seconded by Council Medwood. Discussion. Council White. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful concept. I'm glad we're putting it into uh, written form. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with the full week. You know, like. Right now, as I read that, uh, Mr. Poole and Mr. Harvey could be away for four days together. And uh, the ship needs either of those two men at the moment man, leading. So I'm a little uncomfortable with the, with the full week without anybody here. I guess the, my, you know, myself and Director Harvey have discussed it in length and uh, we know now to not purposefully book uh, a week off at the same time if it you know we, we didn't want to put just leave it again it's almost similar to the last policy if we say we won't do it that means that uh, you know, if, we, if, he, if one of us is off on Friday and the other one has a Friday become available where their family's going to the lake we can't go because of this policy so we do want to buffer where we're able to have some availability situation. I appreciate you appreciate where we're coming from because we need you. It's not that we're critical of it. Without you we're in trouble. So I, I respect your opinions and you know our feelings. I'll take over. Okay. Uh, just the one comment I'd have to make on that. I, I, I do agree with Councilor White here but at the same time I use the scenario of uh, Director Harvey and CAO pool may have mutual friends and there's a wedding to go to. I think that it should be looked at as if that was to pertain to four days off for the both of them with council's approval. Council member. Council member, I'll no, pass sorry. the chair back to yeah, Council yeah, yeah, Council member. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Counselor White, what would you be comfortable with? What number, maximum number of days overlapping between our Director of Public Works and CAO pool would have you feeling a little more comfortable? I think just adding the sentence as uh, uh, Mr. Bobbitt just said, trips in excess of five days would have to be approved by Council. In excess of four days, Council has to approve leave where both members are gone. It's, it's, not, it's not a number, it's just obviously things that death in the bath, there's all sorts of crazy things you should be able to both do. Um, so without consent of Council, it's close to where I like it right now, but five is a lot, and I don't expect them to bend that rule. I expect them to. No, we, we won't start with the line. I guess I, I believe we have capable people underneath us that would be able to handle until one of us could come back. I think they're very capable. Uh, our foreman, you can see a full Ganita, I think they can handle anything uh, until I'm one of us can that. contact them. But uh, if, if we wanted it four, well, like we're, it can change to four business days. But, uh, I trust you guys, personally. I'm comfortable with accepting they have done the right hiring and have the right people to leave it as is kind of thing. And okay. All the questions. Gotta read it again. Gotta read it. Yeah, we did. All in favor. Carried. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whereas crimes of all types and levels of severity has risen in the Swan River Valley to the point where it is affecting our citizens' ability to live, work, and play, and whereas the federal government in charge with creating criminal laws that apply across the country, the federal government is also responsible for administrating the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to enforce Canadian law, prevent crime, and to maintain peace, order, and security. And, whereas the local Swan River RCMP detachment is short on resources needed to effectively enforce <clears throat> Canadian law, prevent crime, and to maintain peace, order, and security, and, whereas the Council of the Swan River Valley believe it is incumbent amongst themselves to assist in providing further resources to an Force Canadian law, prevent crime, and to maintain peace, order, and security within the respective municipalities. And, whereas the Council of the Swan Valley agreed in principle to share the cost of these further resources, therefore be resolved the Town of Swan River support an annual monetary contribution in accordance to the signed contribution agreement required to start up the Swan Valley GIS unit in collaboration with the Rural Municipality of Mountain, the Rural Municipality of Minnetonka Bozeman, and the Rural Municipality of Swan Valley West. Moved by Council White, Jack, second by Council White. Discussion. Council Medwin. I, for one, am not comfortable moving forward with, with this resolution without consulting with our public first. It was a request that I did make, but it did not come to fruition at this point. But my discomfort is in the fact that in our last town meeting and discussion with the budget, this decision has the potential to raise taxes 5% above and beyond what we are looking at for just inflationary needs. This is, in my opinion, a significant increase that we should be consulting with our public and asking their opinion before we move forward on it. So personally, I am not comfortable with this resolution coming to the table without first uh, getting some opinion and having our public aware and giving them a venue to voice their opinion. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. There's a third option. 
abstain. It's in favor, oppose, or abstain. I would like to abstain. Yeah, you may abstain. Okay, resolve, 8.6 is it? Uh, resolve that the Swan Valley Fire Board 2024 budget be accepted. Moved by Council Boychuk, seconded by Council Medwick. Discussion. Council Medwick. I'm looking for some clarification. Um, okay, it mentions that the town of Swanover's proposed portion will be $227,112.68. Does that include the $22,000 mentioned in the expenses capital that the town of Swanover is also to contribute? Or is that to be added on top of that? Mm, yes, that is a budget or a balanced budget, so that would include because the the revenue piece is the first portion where it lists town of Swanover and municipality Swan Valley West. That is the revenue that pays for the expenses listed below. Okay, so that 22 is coming out of that That's 227. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Carried. Point eight, am I correct? 8.7. Okay, resolved that the Swan Valley Fire Board 2024 levy of two hundred dollars and sixty-eight cents be approved for payment. Moved by Council White. Second by Council Medwood. Discussion. Council Medwood. I have a question. Um, this two hundred and twenty-seven thousand one change. Um, how does it compare to what we were spending on the fire department in previous years, like say 2023? I don't have to look that up and let's see if Oganita beats me. Oh, and I don't have my I don't have my budget available on this, so I will not be able to I believe it's a little bit higher. It is. Yeah, but startup fees and stuff, it is a little bit higher. If you can get back to council with that, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Gary. No, eight. eight. Resolved that the amended 2024 fee schedule with the changes to the recreation schedule be received and approved. Moved by. Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion. I think. Okay. All in favor? Carried. <laughs> anyway, whereas it is the position of the town of Swan that the Swan River Valley municipalities must work together in order to provide the most efficient and effective governance on behalf of, or on behalf or its ratepayers, and whereas the four I municipalities, pardon me, behalf of its behalf of its ratepayers. Oh, okay. Yeah, of 
whereas the four municipalities known as the G4 work together on the common goal and have agreed upon payment structures have provided that the, the Swan River Valley's most critical services and infrastructure projects, for example, airport <coughs> operations and the production of a CT scanner within the Swan Valley Center. And whereas the G4 committee has no monetary capabilities, therefore it be resolved that the Town of Swan River support the agreement which details monetary contributions of starting in 2025 to the G4 committee with the following conditions to be considered in negotiations. In order for the contribution to be made, all four municipalities must be included in the binding agreement. The maximum contribution shall be, in, shall be determined once the fund in dollars meet maximum contribution, contribution amount. Therefore, no further requirements to the contribution until the fund is used, triggering the contribution the following year. The annual contribution amount shall equal 0.3 mills on the municipality to prove tax levy circulation for the contribution, contribution year. Moved by. Councilor White, second by. Councilor Boyton. Discussion. I'm not really clear on that last paragraph. The 0.3 mils? The one right above it and that one, line two. Okay, so the one above it speaks to the maximum contribution amount should be determined. So, for example, if the group picks $1 million, that means you contribute to the fund at whatever value 0.3 mils is of that <coughs> year until the fund reaches a million dollars. If you want to do a project that costs 500,000 and, and you expend 500,000, contribution kicks in the following year until it hits a million dollars and you do not contribute it. As long as you use the fund, that's what kicks in the contribution the following year until it reaches the maximum contribution. So, so I understand what you're saying. Every municipality contributes based on 0.3 of a mill, so if it only the first year gets us to say $300,000, then we keep contributing until we hit that one mill mark, and once we hit that one mill mark, it'll pause contributions until it drops below the one million? Yeah, I guess getting into the weeds and the details of this really should be negotiated between the four municipalities. Uh, this, this is just the ideas of what this council would like to see when we approach with them. So that's, it's very important for them to read the following conditions for consideration in negotiation. So we might not, it might be, the final agreement might not have any of these things in there. It's whatever the group decides. It's just the town of Swan River is starting with this resolution and these considerations for the agreement. And one of them is that they have a maximum contribution amount and the other is that the calculation shall equal 0.3 mills on the approved tax levy of that year. So you guys may negotiate that it be a dollar value, that it be a per capita value. That's completely up to you. Yeah, to speak on this, but I brought this uh, motion forward in speaking with that years ago, 0.3 of a mill is just a number to take to G4. 0.3 of a mill was put in years ago for the expansion of the Thunder Hill by seven municipalities for three years. It was probably the only thing that the G7 at that time ever funded totally as a whole valley. I think this is uh, just a number. This, this, this resolution is to go forward to G4 for discussion purposes and to start the ball rolling. What I do think is, uh, for an example, is 0.3 of a mill over so many years. If GIS was looked at something and this had been in place three years ago, we would have been able to pay for it exactly at a, and been done as a whole valley. So this is something I really think we should have a long, hard look at. I know it is a, a 0.3 of a mill, every penny counts, but at the same time, it's a clarity for the G4 to do something together. Thank you. Okay, pass the chair back to you, Councilor Wallach. Councilor Medwick. 
I don't disagree with the concept, but I can't, I don't think I can accept the resolution as it's written because I'm not comfortable with so many unknowns as been mentioned, but yet us having such a definitive resolution. So to draw it back to, I uh, forget how you phrased it there, CAO pool, but leaving it at the point of opening the door to saying, yes, we are on board with discussing further with the other municipalities what that definition is going to be and then once we have that in place having a more definitive resolution come forward but I don't think I'm comfortable with putting a definitive anything to something that is so undecided and undetermined because as was just mentioned what happens if the other municipalities come back and say they're wanting more or wanting less like I think there's some discussions that need to be had. I get putting a resolution to get the ball rolling, but I can't say that I'm comfortable with committing to a specific amount or way of doing it. Councilor White. Just reading the uh, <coughs> fourth paragraph down, therefore could result to tell us under the support agreement which details monetary contributions starting 2025 to the default minute with the following conditions for consideration in negotiations. There's no commitment to anything here. It's asking them, let's, here's, here's a template out there, let's talk about it. It might go out the window. It may, they may say, let's put 0.5. I don't see us tying, that, tying us down at all. It's, it's a discussion paper, which we want. Yeah, yeah the Yeah, just, just to confirm for Council's information, those are, just, those are considerations, and the author did want a starting point. One of the issues was, how do we start this? Where do we go? And so, we listed the potential starting points, but like I say, we can negotiate and then changes. But the way it's worded here, it says the annual contribution amount shall equal. So to me, that's a definitive. Uh, I, again, that, that's all underneath the conditions for consideration. So those are all covered by that last sentence, that these are conditions for con consideration. So it, it, it's non-binding. It can be changed. Okay. All, all in favor? Against? Abstain? Carry. Okay. Oh, I'm finished. I'm coming. Okay, resolve that the council as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31330 to number 31341 totaling $42,497.42 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5421 and number 5425 totaling one two zero seven nine nine point seven one as listed in Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling seven hundred eighty-five dollars as listed in Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling two thousand one hundred ninety-eight dollars and eighty-four cents as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Council Boydjunk, second by Council Madwood. Discussion. Council Madwood. First question regarding the Schedule D direct deposit payments. We have Pitney Bowls for $1,590.80 for postage meter refill. Where are we at with a quote for an upgrade on the software so we can potentially be looking at emailing some of these things out? Director Harvey. I reached out to Central Square so they sent me an information package on the system. Uh, so I'm just reviewing that. Send a direct quote, they just send that information back, so I'm And what are we implementing for people that don't have access to email? Like, how are you going to differentiate? There would still have to be paper copies that go out. Yeah, we couldn't switch entirely to uh, email. 
I believe mm -hmm. taxes are required to go by paper copy as well. Mm -hmm. for yeah. Regulations required. Okay, Councilor Bedwick. On the explanation for checks, item three one three three zero for a voice messaging system of four thousand nine hundred and sixty nine dollars and nineteen cents. Is that like an annual charge? No, our we own our Avaya phone system, and it's the main brain went down, and the the, the major part of it was the voice messaging system, but. That was the cost to repair the system that we own. Okay, so it says just kind of like a one of. Yeah. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. That was not the big monthly one of it was. Yeah. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor? Carried. Whereas section 326 of the Municipal Act, Act provides that the municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsection 300-6 and 300-6.1 provide the municipality with cancelled or reduced taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Service. Therefore be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by the Manitoba Assessment Services on February 23rd, 2024, be made to the 2024 property tax rule, with the resulting increase being $2,354.57, and the resulting reduction be $1,319.12. Moved by Council Boychuk, seconded by Council Powell. Discussion? Council White. We increased by 2000 but we reduced by 1000 in the same sentence. Uh, I'm not a math person, but that doesn't make sense. There was two properties that were uh, reassessed. So one property, the result of the reassessment is a, is a negative $1,319.12, and the result of the other property being reassessed is a, a revenue of $2,354.12. That makes sense, man. Thank you. Okay, with that, all in favor? Carried. Okay, no bylaws, no solution. I'd like a member for the dream. Council Boychuk. I've been kind of debating bringing this up, but I, I will, um, just gently. Uh, it was kind of concerning to me. We had an individual that. Uh, was selling tickets for the fundraiser for the Legacy Committee, which are $5 tickets, obviously in support of the arena, and was selling them at a place of, of work outside the town of Swan River. And when approached, approaching a co-worker, the co-worker said, oh, I'm not buying that ticket. I, I support the Minotonus Arena, which I found disheartening for one. Um, and, and secondly, I attended at the Minotonus Arena to support the Minotonus Arena and was greeted by a person selling tickets there of $50 value, which I bought without batting an eye. Um, I just really want to reiterate to our community that until we start acting like a community, all is one, it's going to be hard for us to succeed and to do things. Um, and I want all of the recreation facilities to be in use, but inevitably at the end of the day, we definitely need one somewhere. So that was just a little something that's been on my mind and and wanted to bring it up. That's everything for me. Thank you. Dr. Powell. Um just you know, just I just want to mention that um I know um it's a street with the, the weather we've had and lost the wall. I've had lots of people tell me how great it is. the roads have been cleared so quickly. Um that's been wonderful because there's a lot of snow out there right now um, and it's, it's really good to hear that you know people see people have looked at on the Facebook too I've heard a lot of people looking on the Facebook and, and saying that their areas or this is their area so that was really nice to hear um, I think yeah I think that's about it for now. Thank you. Dr. White. Uh, I had a, a pleasure to do uh, about an hour visit with a new businessman in our town he's been around forever 
uh, Bob and Dylan, and at the moment he's planning to open up a used car slash truck distribution uh, entity in our community. He's looking at uh, building a new restaurant in our town, and, and uh, I appreciate people investing in our town and our community and helping us all. And, uh, he also wants to be part of RISE, he wants to be part of the Chamber of Commerce, so those who are on the committee <coughs> I want to touch base with Bob, I would say, hey, he's a high energy, wide thinking man. He'd like to be on the medical services. It'd be nice to have an Indigenous person on the medical service team, he said, we can maybe communicate more. And he said, if you want to uh, connect with him, he says, per a thought, he says, when we send requests out to the First Nation communities, maybe send it to all the councillors, not just head of council or the chief, for example, and then make sure that everybody gets the same message. So uh, I want to, uh, he's a councillor at SAP, by the way. Uh, so uh, it's nice to have new businesses uh, coming to our community. Uh, at our last budget meeting, uh, I think at the Cowan, uh, uh, CAO uh, Chartered Accountant Hardy uh, made all sorts of compliments about uh, our CFO Ganita and how wonderful the work he does. And I'm assuming he reduced his bill because he wouldn't have to do half as much because uh, Terry had done the work that he'd done. So I, I want to uh, compliment Terry publicly while we're in the, with, the, with the media in here. I'd also like to thank uh, CAIO pool because I had a meeting, a social meeting with contractor Watkins out of the south where you called her to your family to come up in an emergency, middle of night, whatever it was, pouring rain, and they shut down and they came here and they were raving about you meeting them wherever they were. What do you need? How can I help? You need anything? Give me a call. So when we have people who call in and our CAO uh, looks after them, that's well, that, that's so much appreciated. I, I want to echo the Councilor Bobbitt's comments on the greater work. We had a lot of snow, tons of snow. It's it's nearly cleaned up, so that's appreciated. And with your permission, Councillor Powell, can I make that announcement of your new job? Yeah, that's you. Uh, Councillor <laughs> Powell is now the new executive director. You couldn't say no, could you? He's the new executive director for the Upper Charge Our Friendship Center, and we look forward to continuing the positive relationship we have with that entity. So wishing you well in your new job. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Medway. Well, one of my concerns is our strategic plan speaks to being transparent and engaging with our community, but I still feel as though we have room to improve and to grow. Um, when we're bringing things forward, such as the GIS unit tonight, that is going to have a significant impact on the budget. We work for the taxpayers. It is up to them to tell us how they want their tax dollars spent and whether or not they want to be investing that kind of money in that type of area. What my concern is, is I had asked for a public delegation to be held in front of this meeting and it didn't come to be and I'm a little disappointed by that because I do believe we need to be engaging with the public we need to be letting them know and one of the concerns was that by the time it was decided on the wording for the resolution there wasn't enough notice to invite the public but I hear this and this comes up in our community safety well-being meetings on how to engage our First Nations neighbors and how to bring them to the table and how to have those conversations and work together with them. And it comes up that, you know what, a lot of people are kind of saying the same thing. We don't know how to communicate with them. We want to communicate, we want to engage with them, but we're also almost frozen or held back because we don't want to offend and we don't know how to appropriately start that conversation. And I think that can be very applicable to speaking with our public and speaking with our ratepayers who are in fact our bosses. We work for the public. And yes, it may have been short notice for people to be notified or informed that, hey, you might want to come to this meeting, you might want to have a say, you might want to learn about what this particular resolution is going to be about and yeah it might have been short notice and yes there might have been some frustration but at the same time it was at that point that we learned that we were ready to have something come forward and we were ready to make an action a motion a resolution on it so i think sometimes you need to just have that hard conversation whether it's with our first nations neighbors and having that hard conversation of coming out and saying 
how do we engage with you? How do we have a conversation with you? What does respect look like to you so that we know how to be respectful? It's the same with our public. How do we start engaging <coughs> them? What's the magic number? Or can we just start having that hard conversation? Can we just start, start saying, oh, you know what? We've got a resolution coming to the agenda. I think it might be of importance for the public. So how about we maybe put a public notice out and hold a little delegation at the beginning, which our agenda accounts for, and see if anybody shows up. See if people are interested enough to come and voice an opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Closer. Uh, just a couple small things. Um, all this snow and stuff, uh, our guys have been out there working on the parks and everything and all this fresh snow. It's really, really pretty down in all of our parks right now. So if you get a chance, go check that out. I don't think the snow's going to last long. The fingers are crossed. Um, outdoor rink looks great. It's hanging in there. Um, and everything looks really nice with all the snow. Public Works got our lot cleaned and our streets cleaned and just, I don't know, in the morning you wake up and it's all cleaned up. So I really appreciate that. And just two other things, because um, two of the rec committee are on here. Uh, stamps contract went your guys' way a couple weeks ago. Maybe you've had a chance to look at it. And also, we have a meeting with Ag Society this week. I don't think we needed the whole committee, just representation, so that we can help move quickly along and bring something to the table. So we weren't looking to bombard or overwhelm uh, Ag Society. So just I'm not sure who's planning on coming. You had mentioned it earlier. Okay. That's all I have. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Director Harvey. Uh, yeah, just echoing uh, what Council said. I want to thank the guys for the overtime hours and working through the night. Uh, it's greatly appreciated by me and obviously by Council and the public. And a uh, little shout out to our foreman, Jordan. Uh, he's very proactive, so he's checking the weather. He saw the storm coming. He had two guys lined up for Sunday night uh, so that they could get an early start so that Monday morning we weren't starting at uh, zero kind of thing. And we were talking on Sunday and to see to bring them in earlier, but it was still blowing pretty good. So we figured if we were out there earlier, it would just blow back in. So it's always thinking of things like that, which makes my job easier. And. Uh, and then yeah, he's just proactive like with the loader comments that Councillor Medwin brought up. He had brought that up to me and he had the suggestion of doing the north and south. So I just appreciate how he looks ahead at things like that. And then I attended the Minotonis Figure Skating Club, their finale. They did a really good job. Uh, quite a few skaters, I think there was 22 or so, but they did a really good job out right there and it seemed to be pretty well attended. And Thunder Hill Mardi Gras is this Saturday, so if anyone wants to come out and race, it'll be timed by Derek and myself. We will be out there. Uh, there's lots of prizes for kids if they find eggs with numbers on them, and there's a little border cross race or skier cross race, and then a slalom race. So. That's it? Okay, thank you. See you folks in Eden. Being busy with the various government deadlines, and we got the public notices mailed today for the special service levy for residential waste and recycling. Thank you. See you, Opal. Yeah, I didn't mention in my in my report about the 12th. We'll also have a budget update for council, so there'll be some unknowns, the changes that we made, so you'll see an updated. Uh, and yeah, as CFO Ganita mentioned, thanks to the front staff for stuffing those ambulance envelopes. Sorry, uh, all hands on deck today to get those out. Okay, thank you. Well, for myself, uh, just to mention to Director Harvey there, maybe, I don't know, the guy's probably got it cleaned up already, but we were talking to a plow for the front of a truck would be tested out at the airport to see if it would work. Now might be the time, I don't know, but. Knowing our staff, they probably got it done already. But just good for that. Uh, just to remind everybody, you might have seen it yet. The Ride for a Reason's coming up again this year. Last year, Ride for a Reason raised four thousand dollars and was donated to the senior center. Uh, when you see 
these guys riding motorcycles, those aren't all Swan River riders. Those are riders from all over the place, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg. These riders go all over the place. They pay to ride to raise money. So when our riders go to other places, so when you see them, give them a big wave. It's not just Swan River, it's the riding community that does this for charitable organizations. Just with that, I'd like to congratulate the uh, Stampeders U15 for winning their provincials. It was a mm -hmm. good game, I watched it. YouTube and it was great. So other than that, that's it. Thank you. So with that, resolved that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at eight eleven. Moved by. Councilman Edward, second by Council Boychuk. All in favor? Gary. Aye.